If you've ever looked at a choice focal bead and maybe some accent beads and wondered how you could design a piece of jewelry around them, you will find today's video helpful. I'll also teach you how to use patinas to alter your findings so that everything matches perfectly. And we'll go through the basics of stringing jewelry with crimps. Hi there, Sandy here. Thank you so much for taking this class. So in a recent bead box unboxing, I mentioned that I had ideas for these two beads that came in the either September or October 2017 bead dollar bead boxes. This one is the 17 millimeter check glass table cut dragonfly opaque red with silver wash. Although that looks an awful lot like turquoise to me. It doesn't look so much silver. It's got a little turquoise flux, which I love. And these are four millimeter check glass drook beads, Appetite. I just love this color. And I decided to put them together and make a necklace. So let me show you what I've assembled for other materials. You'll find links to many of the products I used in this video in the PDF that accompanies this class. Keep in mind that many of the inks and stamps are old and are no longer available, but I've gotten some links for you for things that are similar. I know it's often fun to find the exact same products that an artist is using in their particular project. I really prefer just making things my own and digging through my stash and finding a similar way to use my own things. Now what I really love about this pendant and these beads together is this little bit of blue, especially this kind of patina-y look. And so I pulled out this veil that I got recently from artbeads.com that has a patina on it. And I also pulled out these beads, which are six millimeter round beads with patina finish and I thought they just went beautifully. Another thing I pulled out were these leaves as dangles for the dragonfly. However, after looking at them, I thought they didn't quite go. So before I do anything else, I'm actually going to alter these leaves using Ranger patinas. So I have here just a six inch square of nonstick craft sheet. I buy them in bulk and then cut them into pieces and it works out really great to be able to use them for just a small project or a big project. I have a piece of paper towel nearby and some ranger patina. You wanna make sure that you hear the ball shaking and then give it a good shake because there's a few different layers that separate in there. I had to shake this for a long time because it had been sitting in my box for a long time. In the PDF that accompanies this class, you'll find a link to a Friday Findings video I put on YouTube some time ago that gives you a lot more detail about using Ranger Patinas. They're really a great way of altering your metals, and you can do it in so many different ways. What I'm going to do, you can use a brush. I'm going to just get some tweezers just to keep things in place. I'm just going to kind of cover the whole thing. The tweezers just keep me my fingers out of it. When I was first testing this, I, I was doing it like in a 20 minute window that we had before we were going out and I found they stain your hands pretty well. So here you know, I go, go somewhere. What have you been doing today, Sandy? Blow. <laughs> so. Now I'm just going to pick this up with the paper towel and give it a simple blot. That's it. And look at the difference. Suddenly, these go so much better with my planned necklace. Now you can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to actually put a little bit more in there. I think I blotted off more than I wanted to, to tell you the truth. And I probably should take off the jump rings but I don't want to. <laughs> so just a light blot. There, that's better. But what I just showed there is actually uh, kind of shows you you can get all different s stages of looks with these patinas. Here are some I did earlier. And here's one that looks much like that. That's what I'm going to use in my necklace. Here's one I already put on a piece of chain for a dangle. 
here's one that I put in the puddle of patina, lift it out, and just kind of scooched it across the mat. Didn't dab it with paper towel or anything, just let it dry on there, and you get a nice satin finish. And I just wanted it to come out of the holes of the piece. This one I actually left without moving, so you actually get a very different look. It's kind of filling some of the holes, and it looks different, which is sort of fun. So more on the range of patinas. One thing I mentioned I should have, let's I'll show you on this one, I should really have taken off the jump ring because it got coated with the patina, which remember you can coat all your findings with the patina, however it's going to add thickness. So what I'm doing now is kind of twisting it through that hole because it's, it's not dangling freely. So I'm kind of twisting it through the hole and that's scraping off some of the excess patina there. Now that's a little better. And like I said, you might want to be more sensible than me and just actually take them off first and leave the jump rings uncoated. Because these holes and these leaves that they're going through are pretty small. Let's see, I think it's those three I'm going to use in my necklace. And that's the, there's the beauty of the craft mat. A little bit of water and that will all come right up. And this stuff dries really quickly, which is fun. But more on these in an upcoming Friday Findings video. Back to the necklace. Oh, doesn't that go so much better? I decided to keep the bead stringing fairly simple here because the pendant is pretty small. It's only 17 millimeters. And so just a simple pattern of three of my Appetite Drook beads, one of the six millimeters with the patina, and repeat that just that way, that that much, and then the other end will just have chain. And that's really all there is to it. To finish my dragonfly pendant, I'm just going to slide on, actually I tried bead caps. So I have these slightly larger bead caps. And I've done this before with lentil beads where I've squeezed them up and around the bead. Kind of, you can see I squeezed it and kind of shaped it around the bead. But I thought they were a little bit big for this bead. I just wasn't thrilled with the way that looked. So then I found these are too pretty. What are those? Four, five, five millimeter maybe? Maybe they're six millimeter. Those are four, probably five millimeter little bead caps. And there, they, they just add something to the dragonfly bead without being too much. And then I'm just going to decorate the top with one more of those patinaed corrugated six millimeter beads. And one more of these. And oh yes, I forgot to show you. So I had a hard time finding a dangle for the bottom of this bead that was in proportion and looked good. This also came in either the September, I think the September bead box, and I thought it was really pretty. And this would also be gorgeous colored with patinas. But I thought it was just a little big for the bead. And then there's that, which is cute, but I just didn't care for the shapes together. See me being all picky here. And then this, um, too much round, round. I mean, you could be keep, you could make it a motif and repeat rounds. But for me, often when I do a dangle, I want something kind of pointy and elongated. That just is what looks best to my eye. Earlier, I strung half of the necklace. Just this exact same pattern. I started with a crimp and a crimp cover and a wire protector and I have here about a seven inch piece of chain. Just because this necklace is small, I was going to keep it kind of shortish. It'll probably be about 20 inches. And I'll also have a piece of extender chain that I can make it bigger if I want to. So I've got half of the pattern strung. And one reason I love the idea of using a bail here is that if I want to change the pendant, if I feel like I need to change it out, 
I won't have to restring this whole necklace because I just have the the veil is already on there. So I'm going to slide that on and then add the rest of the beads on the other side of the pattern. Now all the beads are strung and by the way the bead stringing wire that I'm using is this. It's 0.015 inches. Oh, the 0.012 seemed a little bit flimsy and the 0.018 seemed a little heavy and this seemed just about right. It's not holding a lot of weight. I probably could have gone with the 012. If I had it, I would have used a gold, but really the only place you even see the wire is right on the outside edges of the wire protector, so it's no big deal. And by the way, if you wanted to, you could even brush your crimp covers and wire protectors with a little bit of the patina and make it all match, but I'm not all that worried about it. And I have a really long end here because this is the last piece on that spool, so I didn't want to cut it because I may find a use for the leftover bit later. So now I'm threading on a crimp and a wire protector and I'm showing you the second side. I used to show the first side and then edit out the second side but everybody wants to see the second side because that is the harder one to do. But both are done the same way except that when you come to the second side you have to do a little bit of adjusting the length. So we go through one side of the little horseshoe wire protector and then through the other side and don't get all excited and go back through your crimp just yet here you need to go through your chain especially if your chain is soldered or has teeny weeny links like this one much easier to do it now although you could always attach it with your jump ring later but this way you know it's quite secure so that's right like that. And now I will slide the end of the wire back through the crimp. Pull it all up snug. Make sure everything is where it ought to be. Kind of pinch those wire protector ends together. And then you want to back it off just a little bit to leave room for your crimp cover and so that your beads hang gracefully. And I like to use my one step crimper, but just a crimping plier will work too. And I always give that a good tug and make sure it's not going anywhere. Uh, before before I trim it. So that's a usable piece of wire. That's about 8-10 inches. So I'll put that back on the spool. And then a crimp cover, which this is what I use the regular crimping pliers for because they have those little round divots that are just not there. They're in the big spot. There we go those little round divots that are just right for holding a crimp cover. I remember when I first tried using these, I was losing my mind trying to pick them up with flat nose or chain nose pliers and they would go squirting out. And I spotted the, my crimping pliers one day and said, aha, and they work great. So squeeze it just enough to close that up. And there's your chain, you just need to add a clasp and an extender chain and probably a jump ring on the other side if you want. And now let's finish our pendant. I like to use my one step looper but not everybody has that so let me show you how easy it is especially if you only have one to do. First I'm going to trim this wire so it's about three eighths of an inch beyond that last bead that I put on. Grab it with my round nose pliers and just, you can see I'm just twisting my wrist towards me. Did you hear that? I could have cracked that bead. I didn't, but be careful if you have glass or crystal beads right next to your loop. You can crack them with the tool. 
All right, and before I add that, I think I'm going to add my leaf dangles. So here's the longest one. But before I go cutting my chain, I'm going to attach it to the leaf. It's much easier to manage that way. So find the split, which I think is there. It's kind of hard to tell with that patina in the way. Oh, I got it. Yay. Put the end link of your chain on there. Close it up. The other way. And let's see, I want this to be about here. So I'm going to cut that link. And where this chain is so small, I'm just cutting the links in between rather than trying to, you, you could open. <laughs> these links and close them, but uh, I'm willing to sacrifice a couple links of chain to make life easier. And then repeat on your other one and make them, I like to stagger the links. And then I'll just open this bottom loop of the eye pin from my pendant, add my links of chain, open the top loop, put it on the necklace, and you're all done. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that even if you don't have these exact materials that this has given you some ideas for ways to use maybe kind of a smallish pendant that you have in your stash. Happy creating. Bye-bye.